very good morning and hearty welcome to those of you who have logged in today because by coming in today you have shown that you are interested in the younger generation that you want the younger people the teenagers to have a better quality of life and that is why i really appreciate that you have come in here for this episode today we have been dealing with all sorts of issues which are common to everybody teenagers adult children but this specifically this saturday i wanted to focus on something which is to do with the younger generation and what uh, particularly what they have been through in the past two years and what their needs and their wants uh, are you must be aware that if a criminal behaves very badly in a jail the worst uh, you know punishment that is given to him is known as solitary confinement that means where he is in a huge hall with 20 other people crowded he is removed from there and he is put in a cell all by himself now normally you would think hey that's a great privilege you are instead of sharing space and pushing and nudging with 20 people and getting crowded up you have a room to yourself what more do you uh, want the guy should be happy but research has shown that being in solitary confinement for extended periods of time makes the person extremely depressed takes away all his initiative and motivation and in some cases even leads to mental illness because man is a social being we thrive on interactions with human beings we cannot survive without human interaction and this applies to teenagers more than any other segment of uh, society a child can play by himself you give him some nice interesting toys or dolls or cars or something and the child can spend hours playing within himself he doesn't necessarily need friends or anybody else elderly person retired he has his own you know interest he may want to listen to music he may want to read the newspaper he want to watch tv he want to do some social work whatever it is he does he can be alone he does not need in between of course you know that we are all caught up in our activities be it studies be it work be it whatever you know running into the rat race and getting things done so we are so busy that we don't even feel that uh, sense of isolation but this teenage is something very interesting teenage is generally even referred to as peer age the same child who used to say that my daddy is great you know he knows everything anything i want to ask anything i want to know all i have to do is to go and ask dad and he has the answer for everything he comes to teenage and even if he does by chance ask a question to dad that is is this right or is a right or b right and if dad says a is right he makes up his mind that b is right <laughs> and today when we have a lot of dads and moms who are all part of this great it revolution can you see this little cartoon the teenager is telling my dad runs an internet company and my mom is a website designer my name is www.illiam there was another uh, uh, guy then uh, somebody asked him what is his name and uh, he was mumbling aditya tell me your name okay spell it out for me he says a d i t y a enter so this is the world that we are living in okay why is it that i am mentioning this because teenagers need social interaction more than any other phase of life as a child you can be without too much of social interaction as an adult as an elderly person senior citizen but teenage is something which thrives on social interaction and teenagers adolescence as i have been pointing out is that phase where you are searching for your identity who am i what am i where am i headed 
what is my worth what is my position in society what's my position in family among friends what sort of career am i going to um, have all these areas he keeps looking for an identity and he can find an identity only if you give him an opportunity right here's another nice cute cartoon you've been awfully distant lately the girlfriend is telling the boyfriend even my cell phone says you are out of range right next to him that's the beauty of it now with all these changes having come in technology having uh, come in what happened in the last 2 years is a matter of deep concern to me not from the medical point of view we have enough medical experts who did take care of our health needs are taking care even now there are experts who are working to see if a fourth phase comes how are we going to deal with it what about the vaccination for adults vaccination for children for teenagers all that they are doing an excellent job but my concern is at the social and the emotional level now what have we done to these uh, uh, teenagers in the last 2 years we have put them in solitary confinement we have told them you cannot step out of the house firstly we shut down the schools and colleges that was the greatest social interaction whether a child wanted to study or not whether the child was happy with the teachers or not whether the child was passing or failing in exams he loved to go to school and college primarily because of social interaction and that is what we denied them for two long years many of them are still being denied i know of institutions who are saying we will open only in june we won't open now even if the pandemic is gone and even though there are no more cases we are still not going to take a chance and we will continue with online classes so it's probably going to be two years and three months and by chance if that fourth wave comes in between you can happily write off one more year what is the impact on these teenagers particularly that is my area of concern as i said we are confining them almost like a solitary confinement we are cutting them off from everywhere okay even if we, this had happened 20 years back and if these teenagers were told to sit at home you know what they would have done they would have created their own ways and means of entertaining themselves one generation back children had an amazing ability to create their own entertainment leisure friends whatever you want to call it most of you may not be old enough to remember you can ask your parents and grandparents if they are still alive in the village if you walk in inevitably you would see one or two children having an old cycle tire which has been rejected which has become so bad that it no longer serves the purpose so they've thrown it away and this fellow would take a stick break a branch of a tree make it into a stick and he would roll that tire using that stick and he would go running behind it making noises like a car not for 2 minutes 5 minutes he would play like that for hours and that's just one example i'm giving you because these are the type of things which are most evident so whatever used to happen whether they these children were rich or poor even during holidays when there were no school or no college they used to invent their own ways of keeping themselves busy now what has happened to this current generation of those people who are today in that age group of let's say 12 to 19 no whatever these people their creativity has been killed they have been confined within what we call as portions syllabus whatever is outside the syllabus please don't ask me and worse than that if a student asks a teacher a question the teacher will say that is not part of the syllabus don't ask stupid questions stick to the portions now unfortunately life does not come with a syllabus or with portions life creates situations syllabus almost on a day to day basis do a random survey among 
people whom you know and ask them before March 2020, or let's say three months before that, six months before that, if somebody had told you that very soon there will be an era where everybody will be just locked up at home, nobody will be able to step out, they would have laughed at you and said, are you a madman? What sort of fantasy is this? Some science fiction movie or something? What are you trying to say? But you know that it did happen. And while it created havoc, the worst was, as you know, the migrant labor, daily wage earners, those type of people who came almost to the level of starvation. And there had to be so many kind hearted people, NGOs, groups of residents who started feeding them and saw to it that at least their basic needs are taken care of. Government rose to the occasion and provided certain amenities by which they could survive. They could only survive. They couldn't do more than that. Then we had the adults, the well-to-do people who had good careers going and suddenly their careers came to a standstill. Some of them lost their jobs. Some of them started getting half salary. And they had to manage with that. There was a lot of issues about elderly people. There were deaths of elderly people. There was a mortal scare that I have a 80, 90 year old parent. What will happen if that parent gets COVID? So all these fears were there. Fears were there for small children also, of course. But somewhere along the line, I think teenagers were neglected. Nobody really gave a lot of significance to what is going on in the lives of teenagers. Teenagers require social interaction as much as possible, right? In fact, try and recollect before 2020, most parents used to try and keep away their teenager from the mobile and tablet and laptop. They used to restrict the hours. Many strict parents wouldn't even allow the teenager to have a mobile. If they would give him, they would check. Exams are coming, now keep away your mobile. Or in the night, you are not going to use your mobile. So many restrictions were there. And suddenly this COVID turned up. And before you know it, Parents were chasing their children, go and sit in front of the laptop, go and sit in front of the mobile. Why are you roaming around here and there? Because schools became laptops and mobiles, online classes, live sessions. What fantastic words they invented, you know, live sessions, as though before that they were dead sessions when the teacher and uh, students used to be facing each other. And here they came out with all sorts of fantastic things. One of the things which really amazes me is people who keep talking about new normal. New, yes, normal. Is this what you consider normal uh, life? It's like somebody falls sick and you are saying, lying down on the bed is the new normal. You better get used to it. Here's another nice simple cartoon. Remember when we used to come to the mall for more than just charging our phones? And this is when you were allowed to go to the malls. Most of the malls were shut down. Teenagers, at least if not school, they would go to the mall with a small group of friends, roam around, maybe have an ice cream, do something, buy something and come back home. Even that was deprived for two years almost. Now, what is the social and emotional impact on the, uh, the uh, children? They are not just losing out in terms of progressing towards what they were doing. They are actually regressing. So many teenagers I observe have become withdrawn. They are no longer sure about their social skills. The way they used to roam around, the way they used to interact with people, the way they used to raise their hand and ask questions in class, the way they used to be shouted at by the teacher and feel bad for a few minutes and then again go ahead and do whatever they uh, wanted. Today, where are they? Here's another nice sweet one. Dad is telling the son, when I was a kid, I had three summer jobs, mowed neighborhood uh, lawns and still did chores at home. And you know what the son is saying? That's because you didn't have PlayStation, Xbox, reality TV and iPhone back in the Stone Age. So that's what you do. How do I care what you did? 
The one interesting thing is, please understand that teenagers just do not understand what life was before smartphones came in. They can't visualize. They can't visualize a life without internet. Have we taken enough trouble to give them some exposure? Just a little while back, I was asking the Sampurna students, how many of you genuinely took interest in history when it was being taught in school? At least half of them didn't raise their hands. In fact, the other half that raised their hands, I congratulated them that despite the horrible way in which history was taught, you still took interest. That means you have something, you have that out-of-box thinking. Because the curriculum, the textbooks and the teachers all conspired together to ensure that history is made as boring as possible. Which you have to force yourself to study. And yet, there's nothing more important in life than history. Have we learned a lesson in these two years? Are we doing something for our teenagers now that things are opening out? Or are we still waiting to see whether that fourth wave will come, whether that vaccination will work? If we are going to be that way, we are going to be waiting till eternity. And this whole generation of teenagers will grow up with a big limitation. They will be deprived of something very, very basic in their life skills. And who is responsible for that? We as adults are responsible. We are not being fair to them by forcing them to sit in front of these screens. However important that lesson is, however important that the portion is, and however important passing in the exam is, if a teenager grows up without forming his identity, I describe teenagers as part-time adults and part-time children. And they decide which part-time. Sometimes they want to behave like babies. Sometimes they want to behave like mature adults. When you allow them both, then you see how they slowly start finding their identity. They need to find their identity in different areas. What am I in terms of academics, studies, exams, and eventually career? Am I heading in the right direction? Do I have something to look forward to? Do I have hope that one fine day I will be a qualified X, Y, Z, some profession, some domain? Will I have a status in society? Will I earn money? Will I be looked up with respect? And right now, how am I doing? What am I doing to reach towards that? The second area where teenagers are looking for an identity is relationships. Every relationship changes. Even before this pandemic came in, relationships from childhood to adolescence takes a complete turn. A boy who has a little sister two years younger than him, throughout his childhood, he's very protective. He loves her very much. He takes care of all her needs. He holds her hand and makes her cross the road. He does everything for her. The moment he becomes a teenager, he says, you stupid girl, why are you coming near me? You go and sit in your room. Why are you going? No, I'm not going to play with you. You, you are stupid. You don't know how to play. You're a girl here. How can I play with uh, you? Have we ever understood why that happens? Have we made him understand why it happens? In fact, I remember in a seminar for degree students in a very reputed women's college, they were talking about a lot of issues such as, you know, bullying, roadside Romeos, uh, harassment, sexual harassment of girls. All those issues were coming up and there were very eminent people talking. When my turn came, I told them there were 2000 girls in that auditorium. Things which we can't even imagine now after uh, this COVID business. I asked them, you know that guys are bad. You know that even old men are bad. You are suffering because of certain attitudes and behavior of men. But almost all of you have some males in your family, in your vicinity, in your neighborhood who have not yet come to adolescence or teenage. You may have your own younger brother. You may have a cousin. You may have a neighbor. You may have your sister's younger brother. 
how much effort are you taking to prepare them for adolescence to teach them what gender sensitization is to teach them what it means to be a boy and girl how a boy should behave with a girl what are the advantages of behaving in a particular manner what are the rewards if you learn how to interact better with girls we are not teaching them and 2 years 5 years 10 years from now these will be the fellows who will be teasing girls on the roads and doing all sorts of horrible things and then we'll point fingers at them every year every generation i keep pointing this out yeah this is a good cartoon this girl is talking to her friend and says sure if i can get away from mum she is busy trying to be my best friend this is another very interesting thing as a parent you cannot be your teenager's best friend you can be your child's best friend but not your teenager's best friend by the time a child becomes a teenager she has already realized what sort of friend she wants and mummy does not come anywhere in that category be a mummy don't try to be a friend there's a lot that she will gain by having some good friends of her age and one good mummy sitting at home don't mix up the uh, two yeah here is this girl who's gone off to the hostel and she's talking to her mom and saying yes mother i told you i am doing fine on my own at college hey could you log on and find my schedule order my books and call me when it's time for class this is the dichotomy she's grown up she's gone to university or wherever it is she's in hostel but somewhere she still wants to be a little child to her mother and that is where the mother can rise to the occasion one of the most important things that we should need to do always and now even more than before is to listen to teenagers one very very common complaint that teenagers tell me is adults do not listen to us they only talk to us forget about teenage even among small children i learn so much from this great psychologist cum philosopher whose name is dennis de menis there's a cute cartoon of dennis where he is glaring at his mother and saying how come when you say we need to talk it's only you who's doing the talking isn't it every time that's what happens we are asking a child for an explanation your teenager has grown up is semi independent wants to have his or her own identity feels that i am capable very often parents put responsibility on me take care of your younger sibling go and do that purchases and come back go and do this 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 now that you are a grown up child you have to do this all that is going on but yet when the child does something when a teenager does something which you feel should not have been done and you want an explanation many adults ask a question and give the answer themselves where were you all this time i know where you would have been who were you with yeah that stupid vivek and ashok and those fellows i know that if you know the answers to all the questions why are you asking me as it is i've got my own challenges these two years have been extremely bad so many children teenagers many of them who got admission into good colleges that should have been a time of rejoicing right but what happened they were told yes you got admission in certain such prestigious college now you sit in front of the laptop and take online classes how does it make a difference then in what uh, college i have got admission the whole idea was that you get the social interaction i remember i spent 5 years in iit bombay i don't say i studied in iit bombay because i didn't but i spent 5 years there happily doing what making friends 
not just with my classmates, with my teachers, with elders, with research scholars. And every time I interacted with somebody, there was something to learn. Now you imagine those who got into IIT last year and were sitting in front of their laptops at home and attending classes by some IIT professor. What is the whole purpose of it? What is the learning? Okay, if that could not be taken care of, at least we as responsible adults, whether you are a parent, whether you are a teacher, whether you are a concerned adult, what have we done to fill in the gap of these two years that teenagers have had to suffer? Have we given them a level playing field? Have we helped them to build what we call as their emotional intelligence? Which behavioral scientists tell us now is responsible for maybe 80% of your well-being and success and fulfillment. We could have spent these two years wonderfully building up emotional intelligence of children, but we failed. We held classes for adults. We have this program called Certificate in Child and Adolescent Development. We held classes and almost on a weekly basis, we used to formulate some activities, activities which a child can do alone if he's sitting at home with nobody, activities which two or three children together can do, activities which a family can uh, do, activities which you can do in slight outdoors, as in go to the terrace or go to the balcony or go to the park and what you can do there. We kept on coming out, but that was a drop in the ocean. How many could we reach? What happens to the bulk of the teenagers who were locked up? Please do not take it lightly. Even if the fourth wave does not come and the entire fear of this COVID and lockdown is lifted in the next few months, do not underestimate the damage that has been done to the psyche of teenagers at a very, very vulnerable stage of their life, the formative years of their life. When they are supposed to be forming an identity and everything turned upside down. I don't think even teenagers who grew up in the First World War or Second World War had to face so much of doubt, so much of confusion, so much of regression as teenagers of the last two years. If there is a war, you know that there is an enemy and you attack that enemy. Here, where is the enemy? Whom do you attack? Whom do you fight? You are shut up in your own little cocoons. For all the big talk that people, adults kept talking that, you know, my family bonding improved in the lockdown. We got to know each other. We spent quality time. I heartily congratulate those families which genuinely managed to do that. But let me tell you, many of them are bluffing. Nothing of that sort happened. And more so with teenagers at home. No real true bonding took place. Nothing happened to take care of their emotional and social needs. Even now, it is not too late. I feel if we start now, maximum restrictions have been removed, right? Two days back, I was doing a seminar for... Uh, Parents from all over India, one of the media houses had organized it. And there was this mother who said, I can't send my son down for contact sports within the colony, within the you know, four walls of their compound. I can't send my son down because they are playing contact sports. For a minute, I was wondering what she's talking about. Then I realized that when children get together and play, they touch each other. And she's mortally scared that my child is not yet vaccinated. If another child comes and touches him, he's going to get corona and he's going to die. If this phobia remains, where are we going to be headed? We have to break through. We have to go all the way back to 100 years when Guruji Rabindranath Thakur said, you know, where the mind is without free and where we are not bound by these chains and fetters into that world. Oh, Father, let my country awake. 2022 should mark that milestone where we complete the process that started in 1947 with the freedom of our country. We should now free our minds. 
let's start with that process i'll just take a one minute break as usual and i'll be back with you Hi, so uh, just wanted to quickly tell you yesterday, in fact, it was fun time in Banjara. So uh, all our life skillers who have just completed their program, they all came. Some of them came with their husbands and family members. And it was good uh, to know uh, the perspective of how things have changed in their life. You know, how the, when the husband talks about the wife and says that, ah, I can see these changes and I'm also learning in the process and things like that. It was really heartwarming. So that's something uh, that was a lot of uh, fun. And, uh, uh, you know, today also we have an inaugural of another program. Now here, uh, when we talk about teenagers and uh, when Ali was giving us certain tips and seeing that how things had kind of, uh, they have changed in the life of teenagers. I thought I'll just call our chief mentor, Sonal. Hey, Sonal. Hi. So, <laughs> Sonal, today we are starting the CCAD program. Yes. And that is for children and teenagers. Absolutely. Now, like Ali was saying, there are things that have changed, right, in the last two years. So, uh, you are the chief mentor. You're also bringing in a lot of topics. How? Yeah. What are the different yeah. topics which significant adult of teenagers can benefit from like you know the teachers parents or yes. anybody who's working with them definitely there are so many concerned adults who want to know ki, how do i help my child build good genuine relationship with genuine friends how do i deal with sibling rivalry you know they are just one year apart but still there is so much or they are five ten years apart so i don't know how to manage between the two uh, age group it becomes difficult that also is covered and sometimes parents may say he you know i don't know how to make him understand that you are on the path of addiction how do i help him how do i do that one how do i do that precaution for that how do i work towards helping him because he keeps himself in closed doors there are so many unanswered questions which you will understand when you attend this program of ccad it's a four months program and uh, wonderfully designed to understand how a child shapes up right from the stage of pregnancy. What you see at the age of teenage is much more work has been done in the foundation years. Absolutely. What you see is what is surfaced as of now. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yes. So, so really nice because also because we, uh, you know, as uh, counselors, we come across so many parents who come and say now, you know, they see the, the communication gap has uh, increased. Yeah. So uh, very nice. So this is something for adults, for anybody who wants to be there for children. For children, what do we have? So we, we are coming up with this program uh, yes. for life skills, you know, Youngs and Blossoms, which is actually going to be here in the classroom. It's a classroom program. So that is actually for children and teenagers. So Sonal, some more yeah. topics from there as well. Yes. Uh, just now Ali was telling about, you know, my child is gone for contact playing. Now this program is all about contact learning life skills. Learning life skills when you are with other people, because life skills is all about learning from people. How to deal with people. If we're sitting in front of a screen, I don't know how to deal with my neighbor. But if I physically be with my neighbor's child, I will know how to talk, what to talk. If he counter questions me or if he misbehaves, how do I again deal back with him? How do I sometimes, even if I'm sitting alone and I want to make certain plans and ideas, how do I go about it? And once I make that, how do I implement it in my real life? Only when you meet real people, you'll be able to implement it in real life. Right? So like that. There are multiple yeah. topics, all 10 life skills of WHO will be covered where self-awareness is there, management of emotions. You would have seen that children are throwing their emotions all over mm -hmm. and you are trying your best, but you don't know how to do. But if children get together with other children, with that concerned adult who is a professional in helping them understand, it can make a large difference to their lives that's about youngs and blossoms wonderful wonderful so two really good programs thank you sonal yes. and uh, you know just feel free uh, to come and uh, discuss with us or any other information that you need so today actually is the inaugural of ccad if any of you just want to get a glimpse of what this is all about the whole team is going to be there just send us a message uh, the phone number is given there we'll send you a link just come and check out 
see what uh, we are uh, going to be covering in this program. Right over to Ali. Ali, back to you. Ah, thank you. And a very interesting uh, uh, question from Vidya. Uh, is it wrong to teach a teenager boy to about menstrual cycles by a mother? It is not only not wrong, it is absolutely needed, Vidya. We had an incident where some children in a, a class were sitting and a girl had put her bag with a you know, sling attached to it on her uh, chair. And there was the aisle next to it. One boy was running and he knocked that bag and the bag fell down and her sanitary pad was in it and it fell on the floor. And another boy sitting behind picked it up and started saying, hey, look at this, look at this and all. And one or two boys said, chi, 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 you are also into this. What are you doing? And the girl got so upset. She collected everything back into her bag, got out and ran from that place. She didn't come back to the class. Thankfully, they had a sensitive teacher. The teacher brought the boys next day aside and said, do you know what happened yesterday? What was this thing? And she asked a question. What do you think? Why is it that you were all, you know, shouting and trying to uh, put down that girl? She was shocked when the boys said, we are told that only bad girls use these things. And that is when the teacher asked that boy, do you have a mother? He said, yes. Do you have a sister? Yes, I have an elder sister. Please go back and ask them. And when they went back and they had the courage when to ask, the mother also felt you know, that this is the right occasion. And the mother explained what the men menstrual cycle is and what are sanitary pads. And the boy was shocked. He said, how come nobody told us this? We would have never teased that girl if we had known uh, this is what it is all about. This is what I am saying, that there's so much to be done as far as teenagers are concerned. We are neglecting them very badly. Sometimes we think that they are grown up, they can take care of themselves. That's not true. There's a lot of hand-holding and guidance that is uh, uh, required. Ah, Vinita says, I'm speaking to a young mom who has a 14-year-old and she's just not able to understand her daughter. She's so stressed that she can't sleep also properly. Her daughter just wants to be left alone. And especially in these two years, the distance between herself and parents has only increased. Yes, Vinita, there are dozens and dozens and hundreds of such families all around you. Since you have taken the trouble of reaching out to this mother and the mother has shared with you, you have come to know what is happening. In most other cases, they don't even know these such things are happening. They don't reach out for help. Nobody support them. They think, okay, 14-year-old uh, daughter doing well. How, how is she scoring in her uh, exam? Oh, she got 80%. Okay, good. What else do you want in life? Fine. What does she want to do? Yeah, she wants to become a doctor and find a cure for cancer. Ah, very nice, hardworking child. And we just neglect it. That's not the right way of dealing with, uh, you know, a teenager. There is so much to it beyond what is... Uh, you know, um, obvious. Yasmin says that uh, not only teenagers felt that way during the pandemic, looking for my self-identity, self-worth, craving for social interaction. I don't know whether to call it midlife crisis or say adolescent uh, adults. Yes, Yasmin, you can be an adolescent adult. Why not? What has this number got to do? I still remember one of my very favorite students. She was the, perhaps, I think, the youngest in that batch of our diploma in counseling skills, the one-year program that we do. So when we started off, we just, you know, had a round of introductions and this and that. And this girl turned out to be 19 years uh, old. And she was the baby of the team and you know, very lively girl. And every used to make friends with everybody. And everybody was very fond of her. After a couple of months, suddenly we saw that she's going into depression. 
she's not talking to anybody she's very withdrawn she's very pensive in thoughts and when people asked her what's happening she said you know in a few weeks i will no longer be a teenager her 20th birthday was coming now generally people laugh at this sort of thing but to her it meant a lot the fact that she was a teenager and everybody was pampering her and she could you know at times act like a child and get away with it all that was happening she realized that with my 20th birthday i'm no longer a teenager so i have to behave as an adult i have to behave as a mature person which i don't want to because she was surrounded by good sensitive people we not only gave her the support and we helped her through today 15 years later she is herself a mother and a competent professional and everything and she remembers this thing fondly but it could have created a havoc isn't it that is what i uh, meant vidya is asking how to teach a teenager about sexuality and about good touch and bad touch in fact vidya good touch and bad touch should be taught before the child comes to teenage most of this good touch bad touch type of problems take place with smaller children so you must teach your 2 year old 4 year old 6 year old about good touch bad touch and keep repeating it every now and then i come across parents who say that yes i have taught my child my child knows good touch and bad touch when did you do it 3 years back no it doesn't work that way these are part of life skills you have to keep teaching them ha huh. as far as sexuality is concerned you should start when the child is coming close to teenage or adolescence tweens as we call it you know the pre teens that is when you should start we have a very nice booklet on you know teaching uh, sexuality giving sexuality education at home one to one you can pick up a copy from the office if you want you can order it online or whatever and use that if you are involved either with a teenager or with somebody who is coming close to teenage i think that's the ideal time if you have a 10 11 12 year old and if you can start inculcating the basics of sexuality and sexuality is not sex please remember there's a world's difference between the narrow aspect of sex that we look at and the holistic aspect of sexuality sexuality starts with an understanding of genders what does it mean to be a boy and what does it mean to be a girl what is the difference who is superior and who is inferior these are some basic questions that we start off uh, uh, with and once you do that ha huh, smita has a very good question how do we help a teenager who does not understand we are here to help we will always want the best for uh, him you know smita why this happens i can't tell in your case i'm not commenting on that but uh, in general i'll tell you why such things uh, um, happen is because we don't listen we only keep talking to the teenager as i mentioned listen to the teenager make him or her talk be non judgmental even when the you know a teenager says certain things which you don't agree with keep your mouth shut at that moment bring it up later if it's an issue of importance where you feel that you need to do something about it but at that moment allow that freedom to the teenager that i am a grown up boy i am a grown up girl i also have something to say on any possible topic no topic should be taboo at home sometimes we put down teenagers the teenager says that stupid fat uncle i don't know why only he comes how dare you talk like that about him he's your father's elder brother he, you are supposed to respect him don't do that he is expressing certain sentiments and probably he also has a valid reason for it at that moment just make a simple comment oh you don't like him is it okay give a gap let a day or two pass away when you're sitting alone with your uh, uh, in a uh, teenager when both of you are in a good mood bring up the topic and say you mentioned that you didn't like that uh, uncle so and so what are the factors that you have seen put it in his court let him take the trouble of justifying himself and you know rationalizing his statement it's a wonderful skill that you are teaching your uh, Uh, child by doing uh, that 
Ha, huh, what is the next uh, one? Praveen, Praveen says, I had a tough time explaining to uh, brothers why I was not fasting certain days in uh, Ramzan. Why should it be so difficult, Praveen? Why is it that you could not tell your brothers? Okay, that happened in the past, but today, if you have a teenager girl at home and simple things like the days when you are menstruating, you are not supposed to fast. It's such a nice and such a sensitive thing which religion has brought in, no? That a girl is already under discomfort. She already has other issues to deal with. Now, if she fasts and she has no energy left and she can't even eat or drink, her day can be miserable. She can become dysfunctional. So, the religion has given that instruction that a girl who is menstruating should not fast. Why can a girl not explain to her brothers? And why should it be put on the girl? It should be put on the adults. It is we, the adults, who should tell those boys that your sister will not fast on these days because she is menstruating. Every girl goes through this cycle and it's a wonderful cycle because that is how reproduction takes place. It's not at all difficult if you make up your mind and most importantly, if you have good communication within the family. No topic should be taboo, as I said. Children should feel free to ask you know, uh, uh, questions. There was another very interesting incident. One boy goes and tells the other boy, Hey, dude, I've got 70 bucks, man. Do you have 50 bucks? Yeah, I think I have. Why? You know, if uh, we pull up 120 bucks together, we can buy Whisper. So what is Whisper? No, I saw this ad on TV that if you buy Whisper, you can go cycling, swimming, you can do whatever you want. Hey, man, for 120 bucks, you can go cycling and swimming and trekking. Let's go and buy Whisper. I don't know whether to laugh or cry. This is the type of awareness that children have. Primarily because we are not taking sufficient interest in them. Interest in your child should not be restricted to sending him to IIT coaching and all those things. Please. Life is much, much more than that. Ah, Vinita says one more thing. Some parents just design the day for their children and they think they are doing their best, which actually doesn't work at all. Not only it doesn't work. This is what I've been telling about this post-pandemic children. As it is, we put so much constraints on them. We did not allow their growth for two years. We suppressed them, which can have a lifelong impact. At least now let us open. Let us try out different options. Let us see what he can explore the world, where he can go, whom he can interact with. There are a hundred different ways of doing it. It's not as difficult as we think it is if we make up our mind and if we genuinely take interest. Ha, huh. Parveen says, uh, no, Lata says even adults would look for me, me time. Can you imagine how much a teenager would crave for peer group and some privacy? Why are we denying this to the children? Those of you living in small houses where there is no privacy, where the person doesn't have a separate room and whatever uh, it is. Why don't we create a situation where we say, okay, I'm going into the kitchen or I'm going out for some little while. Have your own privacy. Talk to whoever you want. Discuss whatever you want. Give that freedom to your teenager, please. It's extremely uh, uh, important. Ah, what is the next uh, one? Vidya says how to make teenagers open up with a single mother and take the boy under confidence to share whatever. Yes, Vidya, wherever there is a single parent, the responsibility is not double. The responsibility is triple or quadruple. There's a cascading effect on the single um, parent to take care of the child. In fact, I've mentioned this before. I'm repeating again. I've written a workbook for single parents in the Indian context. All the books that I've seen are Western, where the culture, the society, everything is so different. So I've written a, a workbook for single parents in the Indian context. I don't sell it. I give free to 
single parents and those who are working with single parents as counselors or teachers, you can just write to me at alikwaja50 at gmail.com. I will send a cop soft copy to you free of uh, uh, cost. There's a lot that needs to be uh, done when there is a you know, uh, single parent. Yes, then what comes in next is uh, Tarveen says, I ensured I explained to my younger brother before he could question me about menstrual cycle. Hearty congratulations, Parveen. This is what I was telling you, what I was asking those girls in the women's college to do. So you have a younger brother, you have a nephew, you have a son, you have whatever it is. Such simple and basic things. And when it comes to talking about some sensitive topics like sexuality and all that, there's enough material available. Not only the workbook which I have written, there's extensive literature available as to how you can go about doing it. And one of the primary things to understand in that is to first ask an open-ended question to your teenager and listen, encourage the teen to talk as much as he or she wants to. Any topic, be it studies, be it career, be it relationship, be it boyfriend, girlfriend, sexuality. Just ask one odd open question in a very neutral manner. What is your opinion about boy-girl relationships? How do you feel boys and girls should interact with each other at your age? What has been your experience among your friends when they make friends with the opposite uh, uh, gender? Such simple questions. And if you remain attentive, if you listen unbiased, if your expression is very pleasant and accepting, you will be amazed how much the teen talks, how much there is a need in them to talk, but they hold back because they say, if I say this, my parent, my teacher, my elder, whoever it is, is going to get very angry and they're going to hold it against uh, me. That is what we need to be very careful about. Even this two-year lockdown and everything that has happened, no? I can sit here and give you one long lecture as to what you should do for teenagers and what their needs are and how you can go about supporting them and making them move forward. But I would suggest a far better way is to make him or her talk. Firstly, about what were your emotions in the last two years? Did you feel angry? Did you feel frustrated? Did you feel rejected? Did you feel confused? Slowly moving on to today, how do you feel about it? Now that things are looking up, we have a little more flexibility. We can start doing things which we could not do in the last two years be it academics, be it relationships, be it in any area. What is your suggestion? What would you like to do? And then give him time. We'll discuss again next Saturday. Take a week. If you think you're going to forget, jot down, take a piece of paper or in your uh, notepad of your uh, phone, jot down the important points. We'll fix up next Saturday at 11 o'clock. I'll keep myself totally free. Only you and me will be there. We'll sit and have a nice, lively discussion. See the impact of that. I need not tell you only when you experience it, you will see the difference that, uh, you know, uh, uh, comes in. Yeah, I saw one more. Yes, Navina, how to support my son who is a teenager and is being bullied. Yeah. Primarily, what I believe in uh, is as far as possible, empower the child who is being bullied. Do not intercede. Do not say, I will talk to your, you know, uh, teachers or principal or I will talk to the parents of this fellow who is bullying you. No. Keep that as the last option. Only when you feel that there is an actual threat to your child. More than that, make, I told you, start off with making the child talk. How do you feel when X comes and starts bullying you? What are the feelings that go in your mind? What are the thoughts? What are the possibilities that you have thought of? Let's brainstorm. Let's explore every possible means of how you can respond to this bully. One extreme end is 
go and bash him up. Other extreme end is break down, cry, run away from there. Both don't seem right, isn't it? So let's see in between what are the via medias. It's very individual and circumstantial, so I cannot give you a general answer which fits everybody. But if you work as a team with the child, and most important, if you keep reinforcing to the child that you are a good child, you are competent, you are capable, reinforce that to the child and the child's self-esteem goes up, the child's confidence goes up, and the child learns ways and means of dealing with the bully. And of course, finally, it is that concept of assertiveness, which again, I've written a very nice practical workbook on assertiveness, if anyone of you is interested. You could teach your child assertiveness, which will help not only to face this current bully that the child is facing, but any time, once your teenager starts growing up and entering into the adult world, there will be so many bullies who come in the form of bosses, who come in the form of people in the club, who come in the form of politicians who try to influence you. They're all basically overgrown bullies. You are empowering your teenager. You are teaching your teenager how to deal with bullies lifelong. What is the next uh, comment? Okay. The other uh, uh, thing that uh, you know, we I just wanted to uh, um, address was the earlier one of Smita that uh, when a teenager does not understand, we are there for help. Let us do a little bit of uh, introspection to see why do you think that teenager who primarily loves his parents, who perhaps respects his parents, who knows that his parents mean the best to him. Why is it that the child feels that we are, does not feel that we are here to help him and that we want the best for him? You know the answer where it lies? We have given a wrong image to the child. I have seen many teenagers telling, my parents love me only if I get more than 90%. Otherwise, they don't love me. Now, can that be true? Is there any parent who says that if my child gets less than 90, I don't love my child? But there's a difference between loving your child and your love reaching the child. Somehow it's not being conveyed in the correct manner. Without realizing it, when the child got only 67%, you shouted at the child. You put him down. You refuse to acknowledge anything that he does. You spoke ill about him in front of others. So that is why the child got this impression. On the other hand, when he did very well and he got a 90%, you were all praised. You were telling everybody how great my child is. You know, he got 90%, is this, this, this. By doing that, you are conveying a wrong message to the child. And that is what leads to this situation that Smita has spoken about, that the teenager after that refuses to acknowledge that you actually love him or that you actually want the best for him. And that is one of the primary reasons why teenagers refer to as peer age, because they keep running back to their own people. They find unconditional, they think they find unconditional love among their peers, both boys and girls. They care for me. They love me. They do not question what marks I'm getting or how well I'm behaving or whether I'm dressed properly. They accept me as is there is. Whereas my elders just don't do that. You see where this gap is coming from. There's a lot that can be done. Please work on it. As you are well aware by now, we provide free counseling to anybody, whether it is in person, you'd like to come over or on phone or through email. You can log into our website and, uh, you know, there's a My Counselor button on it. You can send a message. You don't even have to disclose your identity. You can you know, just write anonymously also and say, this is the issue that I want. On an ongoing basis, we are there for you. We will help you in whatever way. And it's a free service, as I told you. Please spread the word. Anybody who wants to have some uh, you know, uh, inputs or some uh, gaining of some knowledge through this uh, uh, process of counseling, please encourage them to do that. And thank you very much for participating in this session, which I think is going to go a long way 
in helping the younger generation. Please go out and spread the message. Thank you very much. And I shall see you not next uh, Saturday because it is Ugadi. And that's a break because it's a very major festival. I thought it's not fair to tell people to log in at that time when they are involved in the festival. So I shall see you on 9th April on a very, very important topic. And that is building life skills in children. Bye-bye.